Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> and it's gonna snow later today, so that's awesome. That's what I heard. I was like, oh, we just got yeah. snow, like no more. <laughs> you have the song you're here to talk about uh, this week, Hung Me on the Line. Yes. Tell me about writing that one. Well, this one was actually written by a friend of mine, so it's the only one that I haven't written. Oh, the only one on the <laughs> yeah, but uh, what was it that drew you to the song? Then, what was it in the story really? that you went, "Oh, that's the story I want to tell"? Well, I just loved how, like, well, I loved the bass line, obviously, because it's unique and you don't hear a lot of songs like that out there right now. So that sort of caught my eye when I first heard it, and then also the storyline of like the guy that up and leaves the girl, and she just. You know, had no idea it was coming, but in my video, I kind of like hunt him down and find him. So that was fun, and just yeah, I connect with the song also because you know, going through breakups and stuff like that. that it's another reason why I thought it would be the good timing to put it out. Anybody, do you hunt it down? <laughs> <laughs> no, I didn't quite do that. Just in the video. <laughs> so it's part of that. Was that part of the attraction then? That kind of that fantasy element? Yeah, I guess you, kind of, you could yeah, say that. Yeah. yeah. And the, the video you released, who came up with the treatment for the, the video? Because I really loved all the visuals in that Yeah, in that um, good friend of mine from L.A., Sam Snyder, who does Bad Beard Productions. He came up with the you know, the treatment and the concept and everything. So. Yeah. Well, he did a good job. Yeah, I'll have to tell <laughs> him. <laughs> As I was saying before, the concept I want to talk about this week is creative courage. Mm -hmm. And when you release something like this, whether it's the video or the song or the whole album, when you release it and you're at home and you're like, okay, I know it's on iTunes now. Yeah. It's out there. How does that feel? I mean, I get excited about, you know, showing it to the world, but also there is that feeling, you know, deep down that there might be people that don't like what you do or, you know, but... I do it anyway because I love it and yeah yeah and that how does that manifest like when you say there, there might be people who don't like it how um, do you just try to ignore that I just feeling kinda, or, or what happens I haven't had too much trouble like with people like that but I just kind of brush it off and you know don't really let it get to me <laughs> and how do you filter the feedback because you can't take everything in but yeah you need to listen to you know create the, the constructive criticism yes. the stuff that can help you so how do you divide between what's the stuff that's good for you to hear and what is just noise that you're tuning out um well i like like there's good advice that obviously it's not always going to be what you want to hear but i try to take with it anything from what people say i try to take something from it but yeah i guess I don't know. I can tell what's right and wrong. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I don't know how you'd say that. But. No, I think that's a, that's a good attitude that there's something to learn from. Yeah, everything. from everything. Yeah. So. Being creative means making yourself vulnerable to that feedback. Mm -hmm. And I believe that's an act of courage. Like yeah. That, that takes being courageous to go and do that. I've grown a lot, I feel like, over the past year by doing so with my last single breathe because it was so close to me so that was took a lot of courage I guess you could say to put my life out there from a song I wrote that I experienced so yeah I definitely but, say yeah <laughs> so that one was a good experience for me and I grew from it so in when you say I grew from it, what are you thinking about? Like, what specifically do you now know that you you didn't know that? Like, I feel like I became stronger because I wasn't afraid to show people, yes, this is me, this is what I went through because there's so many other people that have gone through the same thing and I just got more comfortable with it all, I guess. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and more comfortable... Because now if you think about the next time you write a personal song, is it going to feel less scary to put it out there because you've done it before? Um, every song's probably a little bit different because they're different stories, but I'd say it's probably a little bit easier than the yeah. very first one that meant so much. But the more real they are, the more special I feel like they are because yeah. people can feel it through the song. Definitely, but, yeah. yeah. The, 
One of the things that when I work with people on their careers, one of the things that's the hardest is patience, the need to stay patient. Yeah. Because this is a slow business. Yeah, it's not <laughs> you, fast. You know that. And you never really are exactly where you want to be. Um, how do you handle that need to, to stay patient and just keep working and the disappointment and then, you know, getting back on the horse? Yeah. <laughs> literally. Yeah, literally. Um, how, how do you handle that part um, of the industry? Well, being in it for a few years now, almost four years, I just kind of learned, you know, as long as you love what you're doing, then it's never going to be like, oh, I, this has to happen at this time because you know, I just enjoy everything that I'm doing. So I don't really put a time limit on things, I guess you could say. So you don't think in terms of kind of like career goals do you, I do, do you have goal goals set or do you do you just go I'm just gonna go with what happens um I have goals that I'd like to reach and some that I have reached but kind of just go with you know what happens pretty much okay so they're goals but they're not but they're not the like timeline. it's not yeah like, yes yeah, someday I would like to do this in my career but it's not like and I want to do that within two years it's just the thing by itself yeah because then there's that let down if it doesn't happen in that timeline so you're very yes. smart. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of, it's tough, it's difficult for people because they, some people need the pressure of, I, to I wanna, make it happen. You know, like, debut at the Opry so within the there, next yeah, three years. Like, so they have, they have timelines. Yeah. Have you always been like that or is that something that you sort of learned as in the last couple of years as you went through? through um, I've learned process? it. Like in the beginning I was always like, oh next year I'm going to be yeah, playing the Opry. <laughs> but now being in the business for few years now I've learned that you got to have realistic expectations. So. Yes, and that's not easy to do. No. <laughs> I'm looking for a specific example in this question. So talk about a time when you maybe weren't as patient or a time where you made a decision that you can now feel was probably not the right thing to do at the time um, and, and what kind of led to, to that happening. Um, like with music or anything in general? I almost, because, you know, the other part that I want to definitely talk about is you set up your own clothing line. Yeah. You know, so that's also creative, also of yourself. It's in a different industry, but it's that same process. So it, yeah. could, it could be from that, too. Like, just something that you can you can look back on now and think, hmm, I probably should have thought that through a little bit more, but now I've learned X, Y, Z. Um, what led to the hasty decision in the first place okay well like recording my first ep i you know didn't really know a lot of people in town or like what's the good place to go to or what was going to make the best product or taking your songs and then they'll kind of change them around so looking back now at that i would have sort of stood my ground and not let them like change the music so much like this new ep that i put out now is all me I feel like everything in it is how I wanted it to be where the first one was kind of you know they produced it a little bit how they wanted to yeah <laughs> yeah but that's and I think and I've learned really, from it though exactly yeah. I was gonna say that is I think that is of all the mistakes quote unquote that people can make that's yeah. probably actually a really good one because yeah. it shows you like oh no no this is not you know, Mr. Producer's name is not on this record. Yeah. It's, you know, this is kind of Pusselman record. Like, uh-huh. I get to say what I want to sound like. Yeah, I was more young and vulnerable back then, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, so that's one experience I would look back on. That is very good. <laughs> and then to flip now to the clothing, um, are there, are there parallels between developing that and developing a music career that you see, or is it so different from each other? That, um, that, like in terms of deciding, now I'm thinking like maybe design. <laughs> is it a similar thing where to the record where they try to get their creative input in there? Does somebody come up to you and go, oh, no, no, we're not going to design it this way, we're going to do this other thing? No, this one's pretty much, it's a little bit different than the music. Like, I have a lot of control over it, so I just... Right basically put pick and put in the line what I would wear and so but the hard part is knowing if pe- other people will like it <laughs> so, <laughs> if they're gonna wear it yeah, yeah. <laughs> so that's a t- tough thing you gotta take and learn and 
Uh, how do you make China those things. decisions on? Because I know absolutely nothing about <laughs> fashion, clothing, nothing. Um, so yeah, I'm how still do you, learning. So I'm fascinated. You know? <laughs> like, how do you do that? Do you, you know, talk to your friends? Do you do market research? Like, do you watch, um, go people watch at the airport and see what everybody's wearing? Yeah, I like to you know, stay up and on the times to see what everybody's wearing, and also like what I would like to wear because yeah. a basic kind of off of off of the music. If people, you know, follow my music, they might want to follow my clothing. So, yeah. kind of the style that I would wear, and then also what is hot nowadays or happening <laughs> or even try to predict what will be yeah what will be true yeah. Yeah. that's not easy <laughs> the last couple of years so you were talking about you've done this now for like th three to four years and most people as you are when they're three to four years in they kind of know who they are yeah as an artist they know what it is that they're bringing to the table yeah what is that for you for me um I guess just being myself, unique, I guess. Everybody says they've never heard someone with, I don't know how you'd put it. Like my voice is different than, I guess bringing my real music to songwriting is important to me, so. That's a tough question. <laughs> I know, I know. I'm like, I'm not making it easy for you guys. I'm sorry. What is the role of storytelling in your life in a wider sense not just in terms of songwriting but just in a wider sense of storytelling yeah, it is I'm thinking like a lot of people and this the, the background to that question is a lot of people I know who become storytellers whether they become authors or public uh, speakers they have storytellers in their past they have a granddad or you know a, an, an uncle or they have story as part of their childhood is that was that the case for you as well? Um, I guess you could say so. Like l learning from my parents. Yeah. There's sort of storytellers. <laughs> well, exactly. But, and yeah. it's often, and I know I'm so I kind of threw that in um, <laughs> because I heard you say that. That so that was really like a totally unprepared question. <laughs> well, good. <laughs> that is. Um, I, I think it's something we don't really think about until we're asked about it. Yeah, you know, like that's it's true. Something that you think like, yeah, I never really thought about how did, it. How did that come? <laughs> where did that come from? Like the, the the need to tell story, and almost without fail, all songwriters that I speak with, they can t they can point to a person or parents yeah. or you know somebody in their life who inspired that storytelling yeah. in them. Yeah, that's what I would say. My parents. So. Yeah. What are your, although we're not setting a timeline, um, yeah. <laughs> what are sort of <laughs> things that you now think, okay, I've reached A, B, and C, now it's time to go for the next steps. What are some of the things that you're working on um, this year? Well, this year I'm going to be putting out another single after Hung Me on the Line, so that'll be coming up soon, and I guess just trying to get it pushed to more radio than, you know, it's been, but... And more shows is what I'd like to do, do a tour, but uh, I guess that's pretty much this year what my goals are. Yeah. And where's, how do you approach touring? Touring, um, that's a tough one, because it is hard to, you know, when you're not, you're an independent artist, it's, it's hard, tough, tough to get, yeah. like, book jobs, but yeah, just, I guess, going to the places where they're playing your song and... Yeah. Trying to reach those people that are listening to you is kind of how I would go about it. <laughs> yeah, and how does social media figure into reaching people? For you? I feel like social media is a big deal. Like everybody can see what you're doing every day if you post something and follow you, and yeah. they almost feel like they're closer to you in a way. Mm -hmm. So yeah, because yeah, they see your day to day. Yeah, as opposed to just. Here and there, when kind of the sanitized stuff that comes out once a month, yeah. in the press release type thing. Yeah. So they get to see who you are. So I like that part of it. And is that does that ever feel too personal? Like, does it ever feel? Do you ever find yourself holding back a little and going sometimes? Like, okay, yeah, yeah there's that, certain things <laughs> that you shouldn't share too much, but for the most part, it's pretty. It's fun. Fun, yeah.
And how do you, what's the relationship like with your social media followers? Like they, they tell you their stories or do they just react to what you um, post? Yeah, I've had times where I'd post something and they share with me like how they, what they went through with the same sort of situation. And yeah. oh, so I feel cool. like that's neat. Yeah, because then you really see like your music yeah. is, is connecting on yeah. an emotional level. With and so, yeah, it's fulfilling. <laughs> Definitely. I always end with a much lighter question. Oh, okay. <laughs> After, you know, all of this. Yes. Um, if you had to put together, like, a soundtrack to your life with songs that have been with you throughout as you were growing up, what kind of songs would be on that record? Oh, well, I grew up listening to Trisha Yearwood. That was one of the first songs I ever sang was one of hers. So that'd be on there. Which which song was that? Uh, She's in love with a boy. Oh, I love that song. Yeah, <laughs> I think I was like two when I started singing that. Oh, that's so cute. <laughs> and then uh, Shania Twain would be on there because my dad was like in love with her. <laughs> and George Strait, I always listened and loved a lot of his songs. So I guess that would be what yeah. some of the soundtrack would be. Very yeah. yeah, like a nineties. Yeah. Country and then record, all yeah. the way up to today, like yeah. there's a lot of other artists that inspire me. But. All right, yeah. thank you so much. Yeah, thanks for having me. Bye.